In this tutorial, we're going to run through the creation of the toolpaths for our barbecue sign. This will ultimately lead to the part you can see on the screen here. What we're going to demonstrate is just one suggestion for how this sign might be made, and certainly if you do plan to cut it based on our suggestion, you should ensure that all the parameters for the tooling and the setup is appropriate for your machine, the material you plan to use, and the tools that you have available. You also might want to consider different ways of approaching this that would divide the part up into more pieces so that it would be easier to finish. In this case, we're essentially just making it as one main piece just with the barbecue text inlaid into it. So you may find that that would be a little difficult to paint. So certainly play around with the design, look at ways how you might separate parts out, do more inlays and create your own version of this. All that being said, let's go ahead, get into the software and start our example. So we're going to click on open an existing file and from the project folder we're going to open the file called barbecue sign vectors.crv. You'll see this was the point that we finished our vector drawing tutorial that is associated with this particular project. If you want to see how these vectors were created you can go back and take a look at that under the vector drawing tutorial section. Here we're going to take this and we still need to make a couple of modifications to it to get it ready for machining. In my final part I want these two blocks to be raised up, I want the border to stick up um, from the back of the sign and then I want this area to be pocketed out, the area between the border, these blocks, the pig, these corner areas here and between the circle, the text and this block again here. So I do still need to make some edits. If we switch on the layer manager, switch off layer 1, we can see the outline layer we created at the end of the vector drawing tutorial. And that looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that off. Switch back on layer 1, select it, hide the layer manager, and I'm going to move some of the vectors onto another layer for editing. I'm going to take the outer and inner rectangle, outer and inner circle, right mouse click, say move to layer, create a new layer, which I'm going to make visible and active and we'll go ahead and call that texture pocket hit OK next instead of moving I'm going to take these two boxes around the text right mouse click and copy I want to keep a copy of these so I'm not moving them I'm saying copy to layer putting them on the texture pocket layer so I can use those copies but I won't affect the originals I'm going to toggle the layer manager, switch off layer 1, make sure the texture pocket layer is selected, hide this and do some trimming on these vectors. We're going to crop them back to each other. First I want to crop the circle um, to this um, text outline here. Now I'm going to need this text outline again in a minute for these parts, so I'm going to right mouse click and copy that to the clipboard. Now I'm going to select the circle, shift and select that outline and use the subtract vectors option. Then I'm going to right mouse click and paste that vector back in. I'm going to be able to use that again in a second for trimming this vector back to this. For this outer rectangle I don't need that so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now I'm going to select this inner rectangle, shift and select this top um, box outline, hit subtract vectors. With the same selection I'm going to shift and select the um, Memphis box outline, hit subtract vectors. Then I'm going to deselect click just the bottom one, shift and select the circle and subtract vectors. And that's given me the pocketed areas that I'm going to need or the areas that I'm going to need for doing my pocketing when we come to actually apply toolpaths to this. Next we can go ahead, toggle the display, switch on the other layers, see what we've got going on in here. At this point in time I only have one more thing I need to do to the vectors before we can start creating the toolpaths. I'm just going to Go ahead and select layer 1. Layer 1 I'm going to change the name to text and pig so I know what's going on there. Hit apply. Make sure that's selected. With the pig selected I'm going to go ahead and hit control U to ungroup it. Now I'm just going to deselect by holding shift and clicking on this outline the outer vector and then with the others still selected I'm going to hit control G to group them back together. I want this outline and this pig vector uh, the internal vectors to be things that I can easily select as separate entities. So at this point in time I've got my vectors ready for us to start applying the toolpaths onto this. 
So let's hit F12 to go over to the Toolpaths tab. And we're going to bring up the Layer Manager, Control L. It's a shortcut key for that. The first toolpath I want to create is to pocket down between the outline and the two um, text boxes I've got. Now you can see it's a little tricky to select exactly what I want, which is why I've divided things up onto layers. I'm going to switch the layers off and we'll go ahead and switch on the text and pig layer, switch on the outline layer, and I'm going to go ahead and choose this offset outline here and shift and select my two text boxes. We'll come to the pocket toolpath and I want to start at zero. I'm going to cut down 0.25 of an inch here and we'll call this um, first pocket and go ahead and hit calculate. We can see the area that's going to machine out. We can preview that to see how it's going to look and if we want maybe we could uh, use a toolpath color on this in order to start to see different areas of the part being given a, a color assigned to a particular toolpath. So I'm going to choose the toolpath color option and choose this dark red in order to color that first pocket so we can see what's happened. If we come back to the 2D, we're going to tile the windows vertically so we can see both of these and bring up the layer manager again. This time I want to switch on the pocket layer, switch off the outline layer and what I want to do is pocket between these internal shapes we've got here um, and in order to machine this area out but also select the outline around the pick, the offset outline around the pick. So with those five vectors selected, let's close the preview, come back to the pocket menu. This time I'm going to start at 0.25 because we've already machined that away and come down another 0.25 of an inch. So our new depth of cut for this will be 0.5 total. So I'm going to call this inner pocket and we'll go ahead and calculate that. We can see that by selecting the pig vector, we're not going to machine inside of there. And for the color here, I may want to come in and change this. And we'll go for this brown option at the top and preview that. Next, I want to do another pocket, which is going to contain this BBQ text. What I'm planning to do with this is prism carve the BBQ text out of our scrap material around the edge of the job and inlay it into pockets that I cut in the bottom here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select the BBQ, but I don't want a regular pocket because I'm going to be inlaying something. I need to come over and create an inlay toolpath. In this case, I want to do an inlay pocket. This is a half an inch deep because we've already machined that out. So my start depth is going to be 0.5. I'm going to do a shallow uh, inlay pocket, an eighth of an inch, 0.25. Um, just use the standard quarter inch gem mill again that we used before and I need to put on a pocket allowance. Now I'm going to put on a fairly small amount, 20 thou, and what that does is differentiate the size of the pocket to be 20 thou bigger than the vectors, and that means when we come to inlay the parts, there should be enough room to fit. You would need to adjust that pocket allowance for your particular application, materials, and particularly if you're going to add any kind of a finish to this that also has a thickness. We'll go ahead and call this BBQ inlay, and calculate that and again we can preview that and I don't need to assign a color to this because that's actually going to have something put into it when we're done. So I'm happy with the way those look so far. Next thing I'm going to come into here and do is actually put a texture into the background area where we pocketed out. So once more I'm going to select these same set of vectors that we had before for our inner pocket and we'll come to the texture option we need to put in a start depth of half an inch because we've machined this area away. We may as well take advantage of that to machine down to that and then start the texture. We're going to put in a max cut depth of 0.1, cut length 2, overlap 20, step over 0.18, angle 0. You could play around with these settings. We're using a quarter inch ball nose tool for this. And I'm going to put in a boundary vector offset because if I don't, the texturing toolpath will force the tool to go, the tool center to go to the edge of the vector which would machine into our border area. So I need to make sure my boundary vector offset is at least the radius of my tool to keep it from going into those borders. I'm going to change the name to texture. I'll hit calculate. And what I'm going to do with this toolpath is give it a color that's the same as my background, that brown color that we checked and I'm going to preview that toolpath 
and there we can see that texture and we can see that by forcing that boundary vector offset it hasn't cut into any of our borders. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, some v-carving on this. So let's go ahead and select the two lots of text that we have. Let's close the preview, come to the v-carve toolpath and this is on the face of the material. This is set to zero so the start depth will be zero. I'm using a 120 degree v-bit tool and we'll call this v-carve text and hit calculate and then I'm going to give that a toolpath color which is kind of a gold color as if this was being gold leafed. We can preview that. Next I'm going to select the inner vectors for the pig. If we close this, come back to the V carving, this time we've already cut this area down so I need to have a start depth of 0.25 because this area has already been machined down by a quarter of an inch. I am going to use the same V bit tool, 120 degree V bit and we'll call this V carve pig calculate and this time I'm going to give this a slightly different color I'm going to go for a dark green color and preview the toolpath for that. Next I'm going to create the prism carve toolpath for my lettering and to do that I'm going to have to create copies of these three letters so I'm going to grab all three of them click them again hold control and drag them out the way then I'm going to individually take them and just drag them off to the side here, put the small b and small q on this side and the big b over on this side. I may want to hit control L to bring up the layer manager, switch on the outline to make sure I'm keeping those well away from the edge of my part, which I am. Now I'm going to select all three of those and we're going to go and do a prism carve toolpath. We're going to use a 120 degree V-bit again and we'll say set depth for full prism. What that does is look at your selected vectors, look at the angle of the tool you've got selected and tell you what the minimum depth you need in order to create a full prism for these letters to get to a point. So I have to make sure my prism depth is that value or lower in order, or, or a higher value in this case which will force it to be a lower depth within the material in order to get to a point. So I can actually go to 0.5 and we'll call that prism bbq calculate that again if I want to I might go a gold color with that so we can see that previewed next we're coming to the point where we're ready to cut some of these areas out so I'm going to hit control L and I'm going to switch off the uh, texture pocket layer hide this and the first cutout I'm going to do is on the BBQ text though, but I can't do a regular cutout on this if I want it to inlay into my pocket down the bottom. I'm going to need to use the inlay toolpath, choose the straight option. I'm going to use a cut depth of one because I want to go all the way through the material. Use a quarter inch end mill. It has to be the same tool that I cut the pockets with. That's very, very important. Uh, we'll call that BBQ inlay cutout. Go ahead and calculate that and that will do any rounding that it needs to do for the corners of those letters in order to make sure that when they're cut out they'll inlay into these pockets that we cut for the text down the bottom here. Lastly we're going to go ahead and cut out the whole sign so I need to make sure I'm selecting the um, inner of the two outlines here so let's zoom in and select that. If we wanted to, we could hit Control L, switch off the text and pig and make sure there was just that vector to select. If we close the preview, we're going to come and say Create Profile Toolpath, cut depth of one inch going all the way through the material. I want to cut outside of this and we'll call that Toolpath Cutout, Calculate, go ahead and preview that and we could say Delete Waste Material at this point, close this, maximize my view. If I wanted to, I could play around with different colors for different areas in here. I could send this to my customer to give them an idea of how the part's going to look when it's cut um, by going up to View and Save Shaded Image to save a JPEG of it if we wanted to send that out. More importantly, when I come to actually save my toolpaths, because I use the same tool for a lot of operations, I could output these in a single path. So the first pocket, the inner pocket, and the barbecue inlay could all be cut in a single toolpath because they all use the quarter inch end mill. The texture was the quarter inch ball nose, so that would need to be separate. The V-carve text, the V-carve pig, and the V-carve prism letters, again, all used 120 degree V-bit, so could be output as a single toolpath. 
Then finally, the inlay cutout for the letters and the cutout for the whole sign could be a single toolpath as long as I made sure the barbecue inlay cutout was first so that it didn't release the sign blank before we'd cut the part out. So that essentially concludes uh, the toolpath section of this tutorial where we took the vectors we'd created in the original vector drawing tutorial, showed you how with a few more minor edits and then working carefully through the toolpaths we're able to create quite a complex part using different tool geometry, layering up the um, depths that we use for things like the pockets and then making sure we take that into account when we get to doing v-carving on those areas or texturing in those areas as we have with this example.